how can DAOs become a reality and how can they truly drive projects to what is best for the most? I have a question about DAOs. I think we cannot emphasize enough uh, how important they are, especially in today's world, right? Uh, how, how, how difficult things are becoming between governments and people and all this. And, but, you know, we have a challenge, right? The challenge, for example, is that he, people still have to outgrow the idea that a government and institutions have been on top of them taking decisions. Anyone wants to take the question because I know it's an answer. It's, it's kind of a difficult question. So what do you guys think about it? I think I can try at that first. And again, without specifically pointing to a DAO, it's simply a way to coordinate a lot of people in a lot of different places without needing to buy into a specific corporate mindset, ideology, and economic system. So we're seeing things come together like the US Constitution almost being bought by Constitution DAO or money being raised for Assange through Assange DAO, fundraised through the juice box DAO. Uh, and that's like only one small little micro set. I think it's, you know, the DAO is going to be such an abstract topic. And what matters is people don't have to go the traditional route to aggregate both money, right? Assets, time, um, creativity and everything. And they can go, they can try it out and they can fail fast. And that's what Web3 and the decentralization does in general, where it took the railroads hundreds of years to kind of open up and allow countries to use them in general. Then it took decades for Web2 companies because the incentives were to create competitive moats and dis, um, disincentivize competition. Now we're like in a matter of quarters uh, to truly disrupt something. And that's that's awesome because I think the, the best leading indicator for survivability, for an entity, for an organization, for a species in general, is the pace of innovation, right? We're innovating so fast, we're failing, we're breaking, and we're failing forward and recreating, right? That's incredible. And we're like at this cusp of a Cambrian style explosion of evolution, kind of what Ethereum did for um, blockchain stuff in general. Um, it's just like endless innovation. We have no idea what it's gonna be. That might be under the Dow umbrella, but I think it's more like just innovating fast, finding ways to coordinate, finding commonalities, and then letting the the voice, the well incentivized hive mind, uh, make the decision as opposed to a few rich people behind closed doors. What I what I find interesting, and I'm I'm going to contrast some of the stuff you're saying, and maybe it's a, a bit of a pessimistic view on DAOs, but I think that there really is a plutocracy issue with DAOs, where there is high net worth of people or companies or even networks that are accruing large governance tokens and then have you know try to sway things to the benefit of you know their network or their own uh, yeah their own benefits, um, and I also think when you fractionalize voting, it's kind of like the idea of a dem democratic you know entity. Uh, ultimately, there's still a lot of apathy and people aren't voting. And so there's not enough turnout. Uh, so now everyone wants, everyone loves the fact of DAOs. Everyone loves having a say, but they're not actually voting. And I think a part of that is because they don't really understand what the impact of these proposals are on the network. Not everyone knows these networks all the way down to the weeds to be able to really interpret uh, what the impact is for these votes. So what do they do? They abstain. Um, so there's going to be this, there's going to have to be something that's going to have to happen where you put everything in layman's terms um, to be able to understand what the governance vote is. You need to be able to not have people accumulate enough tokens to be able to sway votes too drastically. Um, there's just and there's just a lot of things like devs, for example, in DAOs um, that work for DAOs, they don't want to have to put in a, a uh, proposal to be paid. They're going to have to clock their hours, explain what they did, and everyone's going to have to make a governance vote to say, yes, you deserve being paid. Um, there's going to be a lot of friction along the way. So I, I don't, I really don't know the solution, um, but I think we're very far from reality where DAOs, you know, overthrow companies. Yeah, I totally agree with that. And what's great is that when something doesn't work, we can break it, right? We can easily switch to something else or we can change the economics in general, we can change the participation value. And I love that. Like, let's break shit really, really fast and rebuild so that we can make something better. I think that's the way it always should be, right? No one should be immune. No plutocratic 
um, uh, something or somebody that owns things should be able to decide forever. They should be dethroned immediately if they're not um, working for, for everyone, not just themselves. I love, I love breaking and fixing. I 100% agree with you. But I think in this space, it's so easy to copy, paste, and network. You start seeing that, like, instead of actually fixing something, people just spin up a copy of it and you have to start, you know, you start there. Um, so it's going to be interesting also to find a way to incentivize people to actually not be mercenaries and staying for temporary incentives and really staying for the long term to develop a network. Mm, yeah, very, very interesting. Right. What do you think? Michelle? Yeah, no, it's really true. That's the reality. And that kind of shows how early we are. So yeah. look, my question is this. Web3 is such a huge umbrella topic. We only just scratched the surface mm -hmm, here. Mm -hmm. How can we really encourage people to, okay, you know, really learn about Web3 themselves and really start to understand how can I participate? How can I contribute? Uh, Gregor, do you want to start? Yeah, I mean, <clears throat> the, first, the first step, I guess, is always um, you, you just got to start somewhere. Um, and I mean, I just like see like, you know, um, what, what the questions I get from people like, a year, two, three years ago, it was like, hey, what is Bitcoin? Um, today, the questions are a different ones. Today, what's an NFT? Um, and I think the, everyone has an interest now in some aspects of this whole new world. Um, and I think that's, that's, uh, that's really great because the interest is already there. So now it's just a matter of taking the next step. Yeah. Kyle, what do you see? I'm sure a lot of people ask you the same questions as well. Yeah, I mean, I was, I've was i been addicted to the institutional mindset for two decades now. Right? I was 12 years military, then almost seven years Goldman Sachs. Like a couple years into Goldman, I started participating in the space as a volatility trader, then a trader learner, and then you know a heavy DeFi user when the early protocols came out. Um, and then a couple of years ago, like became a true believer, even while hanging my hat at, a, at Goldman Sachs, TradFi shop. And I quit Goldman and took a huge pay cut to come work harder than I ever have in my life, pretty much. And whenever somebody asks me, like, why did you do that? What are you doing with your life? And I'm just one, I say, get into discords, get into telegrams, fool around on different chains. And it's so much fun. I get so much excitement and joy and utility, like value out of being this anonymous participant. And I'll hopefully always be anonymous. And if I get docs, I'll change everything and just become anonymous somewhere else because I just love living in discord and being part of the hive mind. And when you see that excitement, when you see things break and build fast, it's really hard to go back and manage somebody's money in, in the traditional finance world or go to a web two shop and just get told what to do when you can just go and, and kind of create a new world. So when you tinker, you see the, the possibilities um, well, obviously there's economic gain, but the joy that I get out of being part of this uh, in discords and telegrams and helping all these chains uh, from what I'm doing on, at Edge Node in the graph, it's just like, I, I've never been so fulfilled in my life. And that's from like finally weaning off the institutional addiction and being able to take the jump and like uh, just fool around and see how exciting it is.